first of all, uh, thank you everybody for joining. This is our first uh, kickoff meeting for the second batch of interns. Um, I sincerely wanted Jagdish to do the inaugural second semester. The first one was inaugurated by Ketki, as you know, Jagdish, you know Ketki well. Yeah. Um, and uh, then uh, this one, I really wanted you and very happy that you accepted to be here. Um, you will get formally introduced to Jagdish. I will tell you the personal side of Jagdish. He is probably the easiest person to interact with. You know, there is no airs. I mean, the humility that come across, comes across. And I've met his family too, and they're all so humble. And uh, it's amazing. He spent a lot of time outside of India. So usually when people spend that much time outside of India, um, especially the younger <laughs> generation, and he's clearly a younger generation. They tend to kind of get a little carried away, but Jagdish, uh, an amazing human being. I, actually, I consider him as a friend. I always hang out with him as a friend, not as, you know, whatever else. But uh, I really enjoy his company. And uh, um, he is, last two, three years, I watched him closely. And he is an amazing human being. Last three years, I've, literally seen him grow when he came he was a little nervous a little shy not sure of where he's going uh, the reason i say that Still not is, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he has chosen a career path where he's very different he has a phd he is a good researcher he has done a lot of good work but decided that science he didn't want to do actual bench science but, you know, be a mentor and be in business development. So um, just like Ketki, you know, she also decided like uh, Jagdishi. And so that's why I wanted you, uh, Jagdish, so that people can hear how successful younger generation is not just focused on, uh, you know, being a researcher, but are really, um, you know, delving into other very exciting areas. So. He's been a chief operating officer uh, now for about three years now, uh, yeah. Jagdish. Two, yeah. Maybe less than two. Yeah. Less than two. But the work he has done is phenomenal, um, especially the work related to social media, spreading the word around, uh, developing an entity and a presence for FABA. And uh, Sharanya will say more, but... All in all, he is just a rising star in my eyes. And um, I think you guys should are lucky, eh, first of all, to get to know him and feel free. That's what I said. Hum his humility is so good. He will never say no to you. You can interact with him. He can be your mentor for life, whatever. So I'm very happy and um, really excited, Jagdish, that you've accepted uh, to come and uh, talk here. Thank you so much. And I will now hand it over to Saranya to do a formal intro and then you can start your PPT. Yes, yeah, Saranya? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm so happy to give introduction about him. Yeah, so Dr. Jagadish Gundla is a Chief Operating Officer at Federation of Asian Biotech Associations. He's an entrepreneur with a strong science background and his expertise in the areas such as cancer, digital health, biotechnology, and cutting-edge science. Through building and guiding startups in life science and healthcare, he has been fortunate to witness some success and foster a passion for innovation. He has collaborated with esteemed organizations like European Union's EIT Health, and he had a privilege of founding startups like Dare to Start and GLHN. He is also focusing on empowering individuals to navigate their own paths and also focusing on nurturing communities and mentoring aspiring entrepreneurs. Now here we have the privilege of learning from his journey. Beyond his professional achievements, get ready to hear about his motivations, inspirations, and the moments that have defined his career. So, welcome you to the IEFR talk session series. Thank you. I don't know what to say. It's too much of introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but firstly, thanks, Uday and Charania, for, for such a kind introduction. I 
just i, I want to keep chat on <laughs> i don't know so uh, hello everybody good evening or, or good morning wherever you're joining from i think i have one thing that i i made first so before jumping onto the webinar i would i want you to scan this qr code or otherwise go to menji.com use this code and i i would like to know your background so where what is your background i mean what are you studying or or uh, uh, bachelor's masters or phd you know based on that i can tailor my my presentation i would stop here and then continue the session so so i mean why why i try to ask you is that even he, among yourselves you can start collaborating you know most of the time we we are just passive listeners but you don't need to be you, this this opportunity it, you could be you know uh, i i remember one of the sentences that one of the entrepreneur in in germany used to say like never miss an opportunity to be fabulous if you get an opportunity try to show your skills like uh, now you know this is very small group only 28 people are there let's say 25 are there remaining are organizers so you can start interacting you can be very openly talking about your views what exactly you are expecting and everything but uh, but most of you you know you try to be very silent so you can you can try to avoid it okay so one of the thing that i want to tell you is that you know uh, this is a this is an age of generative ai and and my presentation if you see it, all the slides were made using gen ai so i just give my prompts and i i edited them how i want but everything was done with gen ai so that's a disclaimer that i want to show like you know a wall can make very beautiful slides it's all everything is automatic okay so this is actually a very broad topic that we have chosen so like you know linkedin is one separate session cv is another session you know job search is another session so we tried i tried to put everything under 10 slides and but i will talk more more than the slides so i'll explain what exactly you know how you could tailor your cv or how you could you could make your linkedin presence online or how basically you can do job search so it's i mean basically we may talk most about job search today but but it is actually not only job search it's just basically building your personal brand so if, if somebody says what is your personal brand so that has to somehow show like it could be you know community building or you are a good crispr scientist or or you are you are you know good photographer or or somebody who can paint so that that somehow it has to be visible that is personal branding so that is what we will talk quite a lot so in my experience what i have learned is that you know most of the researchers when when you talk about they're building their cv or something we are all very imposters you know we don't like to talk but but the era is gone so we have to somehow to sh we have to showcase our skills where that other person knows that what we are so let's let's go so personal branding define your unique value proposition so before going into what is personal branding can somebody tell me what is personal branding i actually have one more one more simple quiz that i made so let's let's go yeah. so again go to the mentimeter and then just write what is personal branding so you can again click the click the qr code that was there to show the skills to get what we require okay very good so so in a nutshell like if you understand you yourself has said that everybody are kind of unique and to show that uniqueness is the personal brand am i right so that, that's what you what you are telling right yes sir very good so let's let's look into what what how exactly you can build, build a personal brand so we can talk we can keep this in these sessions very in fact i mean slides are just a way to help me out to to uh, uh, focus on my thoughts otherwise let's keep more interactive so you you are you are all telling that you all have unique skills and you need to showcase that's that is what is personal branding so may i ask like what is stopping you to showcase your skills or otherwise did anybody teach you how to showcase your skills you all know how to make a good cv good resume or good cover letter or good linkedin did anybody teach you no sir 
yeah so it's, it's i think somehow our our curriculum is all designed to get marks and we are all good in getting good grades you know, first rank second rank distinction everything but but when you are in the job market we don't even know how to look for a job or how to do interview sessions because these are all practical skills which most of our teachers they themselves do not know so that's why you know it's very tough for us to think of personal branding especially you know our our mindset sorry to say that especially the indian mindset or even in the in the people who are in the academics we think we are all this low somebody will judge us somebody will point us we call it as imposter syndrome so the more we know the more we think that people will judge us that's why we don't really like to showcase ourselves that's why our personal branding is low but how can we build a personal brand so let's let's look into couple of things okay so crafting your personal brand so you know when you are building a personal brand you need to be very very clear what exactly you are looking at so it could be you know, applying for a job applying for a grant so you need to have a, some clear compelling personal brand that really showcases your unique skills so you all said what is a personal brand unique skills along with skills you also somehow need to showcase that what are your experiences so this is like a backup so some proof that you know you carry these skills and passions so this will help you stand out in a competitive job market so as i said you know we will talk more about job skills but maybe later once we really it, i will also tell you like how to find out jobs which are not advertised so let's keep it more interactive so whenever you have any doubts or something that you did not understand feel free to stop me and and ask questions okay so in the personal brand it's always about highlighting your strengths so everybody will have strengths weaknesses but but the thing is how could you showcase your strengths or even if you have weakness how can you you know somehow compensate with your strengths so most of the time you know when you when you start making your cv or linkedin you will struggle because you yourself doesn't know about your strengths it takes a lot of time Uh, sometimes you know people are so confused that cv has to be made in one page or half page two pages so that the time they forget about themselves let's say let's say you have a lot of grades from the from the childhood that you are good at uh, you know swimming skating or you got good good prizes in in, uh, in 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 quizzes or you got good publications and everything but at one point you forget all these things so you forget and you you don't even write to like to write these things so that's where you really have to sit you need to take a pen and paper or a computer or anything sit for a day or two just question yourself like what am i good at what are my strengths what am i good at what are my strengths when you talk when you talk to yourself you will understand a lot of strengths so many of them like i might have trained around 4000 to 5000 people on cvs like uh, you can look on youtube or google so you'll find out like what my trainings are so when i work with people they they you know they struggle to make cvs they they like when you tell them like look you have good publication why are you not putting it so they they might they might have forgot about that so these are mainly important another one is transferable skills and core values so these kind of things you know you neglect usually you know people consider that making a cv or resume or linkedin people think that we are just machines to produce results no but we are humans as a human you have skills you have values somehow you need to showcase that in your profiles so that's what is very very important so weave this into a personal brand that authentically represents who you are and what you have to offer so it's always about what kind of skill sets that you carry not only professionally as well as you know as a human what kind of skills you carry and how you can showcase that that is your personal brand so communicating your value so it's it's like telling others like what are your values and what is it like let's say you, if somebody hires you so do they hire you yesterday i was i was at a very big uh, uh, pharma company in in in, in uh, hyderabad so the dmd deputy managing director was telling me that that he want to hire some good candidates so they they he got very experienced cvs like 15 years 
in in couple of research areas or 20 years research areas but the thing is they are only good in that paper other than that they do not have any transferable skills they are good at one technique but once after the technique they are not good at anything so he was explaining to me that why it is so difficult that people are not developing skills or otherwise they are unable to communicate these skills so you need to communicate your value so if somebody hires you what are the values that you are bringing in not only as as a scientist or or a researcher or or even as a manager or something but what are those like you are a good team player or good motivator good coach good listener you know good listening is a very important skill so you need to somehow showcase that on your on your profile so craft a concise memorable personal brand statement that clearly articulates your unique value proposition so remember that upp unique value proposition this will help you effectively market yourself to potential employee employers okay so okay now let's go into simple simple things so the first one is cv can somebody explain to me what is cv let's, so what is cv so as i said you know let's keep it really really interactive what is cv who would like to answer me that what is a cv or what is a resume or what is a curriculum with it it shows everything of my educational background uh, my experiences achievements excellent okay it gives an employer overview of my achievements and everything yes yes so basically it's your sales brochure like if you are selling something you usually have a brochure for that right so for a year you are selling yourself so you need to develop that brochure that brochure is your cv so you can make it designer you can you could basically make it whatever style you want so there are certain rules that you can do but otherwise there are, when you have certain skills you know you can you can make whatever you want so in the end you know you should be able to showcase that employer that you are the right candidate for the job just by looking at that document that is a cv so cv is just a document whether it's in a print or in online where you are showcasing your skills so you know in the cv when you when you make a cv you need to really focus on your key competencies key competencies carefully select the most relevant skills and experiences that align with the target group so sometimes you know when you are applying for a role which uses mass spectrometry so you need to showcase that why that you are good at mass spectrometry mass spectrometry you don't need to write something you know you are good at aeronautical engineering or other things so they could go in in your hobbies or something so it is really about your the specific things that people have asked and you need to showcase that skills and also quantify your achievements to demonstrate your impact quantify in the sense you need to try the results let's say as i said as we have taken mass spectrometry as a result so when you when you write about mass spectrometry you can tell like what are you good at mass spectrometry using mass spectrometry what have you achieved let's say you have quantified certain protein or otherwise you have published so many so papers so your skill is there your result is there, and which is relevant to the job so this is this is very very important so focus on key competencies okay so tailor your cv so i have seen people one they will make one cv in lifetime and they will send it everywhere so if, if they apply for a salesman it's the same cv if they apply for researcher it's the same cv if they apply for you know pi or anything it's the same cv unfortunately it doesn't work so many of many of people apply the jobs otherwise and and they don't get the jobs why do they don't get because their cv is not tailored so that's why you tailoring your cv like customize your cv for each job application emphasizing the qualification that make you the ideal candidate avoid a one size fits all approach so you have to be really the ideal candidate and how you can make it ideal by tailoring your cv so read the job application and and look for the keywords and see what are they asking for and put that in your cv are you all getting my point yes sir, yes, sir. yeah can i get a thumbs up from every, from everybody yes sir yeah so there is in zoom you can put a thumbs up okay yeah, i see only suma is the only one who is active okay, pragya has done nagasirish has done 
okay deepshika ipad 2 has done okay it looks like only four or five people are active remaining are all you know just putting attendance here that maybe your teacher or somebody has asked you to join this session okay so let's go so you know as i said transferable skills so in this day and age transferable skills are so so important it's not only the skills that let's say you are good at uh, you know computers or anything but there are so many other things like you know conflict resolution problem solving communication adaptability to situations this can really really differentiate you from others so sometimes you are good at only one technique but but there are other people who might be good at 10 techniques but what they are you know really bad in team management or they are unable to communicate what what they they can so this is where if you can showcase somehow through results you will be the ideal candidate so most of the time you know i, I mean i remember last year when we hired two interns they we didn't even look at their cvs we just looked at their attitude when they came to us they show they came with so much preparation they told like sir your father is doing that your father can do that we will do that we will do this and when they came to us we just fell in love with their passion we didn't even look at their background i i still don't remember looking at their cvs we had them but for the same job we got around 200 cvs so we looked into that cvs and we never selected anybody so this is where you know transferable skills when you showcase them you get easily picked okay so optimize for applicant track so one of the very very important these days is that you know when you apply for jobs especially on linkedin or naukri.com or any places it's all about keywords because this is there is something called as application tracking system these are computers that look for words if somebody writes for a team player experience 6 years and uh, expertise in mass spectrometry you need to put all those words in your cv so you need to somehow tailor it look read job ad very carefully and look what are the things so if a human is seeing it no problem at all but if a computer is seeing it it doesn't know whether whether you are you are good at something or uh, or other thing but it can only look for the words it doesn't have common sense so that's where you have to optimize it for applicant track so this is very important there is something called as application tracking system most of the companies use it even when you apply on linkedin linkedin has its own search algorithm so it uses so incorporate relevant keywords and phrases to ensure your cv is easily passed by the automatic recruiting system and make it pass the initial screening so this is only initial screening afterwards there will be interview there will be a, rec a recruitment manager hiring manager who will talk to you but before that application computer has to screen so if you look at the cv thing i did not teach you how to make a cv i'm teaching you how you can differentiate yourself so there is if you want to know exactly about cv in youtube you will find my my uh, thing like how to make a cv jagdish ganla and papa so there i i will go very detailed way like what to put like whether the experience goes first or the education goes first or otherwise whether can you put hobbies or not so i have explained everything detailed on youtube so you can look at there but here since we have more topics to cover like linkedin personal branding and everything i'm giving you only few things that can differentiate you from others so as i told focus on key competencies tailor your cv for the job showcase your transferable skills and optimize for applicant track the last one is very very important because at least if you if the computer screens your filter uh, screens your application there is a human hr manager who will look into the jobs okay so let's go to the networking strategy so like here we have talked about cv now we are talking about networking which is very 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 important so what is networking anybody can anybody explain again you know everything is a big topic all the all the all my videos are there on youtube you can look it up but here i'll i'll i am just adding only few sentences and i would like to talk more so what is networking is there anybody how we connect sweta bakasa how we connect okay good anybody else what is networking connecting with professionals in the field okay it's like connect to hr of any companies and make comments on their post on links <laughs> i like this one yeah thank you mitan okay so you think commenting on the linkedin post is networking okay 
okay uh, no sir it's not like that but uh, if they say ourselves on their comments so maybe sometimes they also view our profile and if they have any post or something like in their companies they okay. come to us like that yeah okay that's that's one of the strategies so it may work or may not work but uh, yeah that working is is a big topic but but let's let's really look what are the few things that what networking can come so i'll i'll explain you one of the very very own my own personal example like what networking can do for you so two examples that i will give so my friend uh, uh, his name is amol so amol is 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 was returning from us because he couldn't stay in us and his wife and he himself were coming back to india and he had no clue how to look for a job he was applying from abroad for and he was not even qualified for interviews like he was never selected in the flight his wife was sitting to one of the you know co passenger and then their daughter was crying and their daughter was crying some lady came up and said like and she tried to help his his, his wife and slowly they started interacting and then they explained like what kind of background they are coming and why they are coming from us you know the lady who helped is actually a wife of one of the ceo of a pharma company in hyderabad so just this one hour or half an hour interaction his cv was forwarded to that lady and that lady immediately showed to her husband he got a job without even before even landing a job uh, before even landing in india so one of the beautiful ways that how network king can help that is one example another one my my another friend sorupa in in munich in germany where she was looking for jobs from i think past two or three years and she was never picked even for the interview so one day she was she went to her uh, her son's kindergarten and kindergarten you know right lkg ukg and then uh, while she was dropping her son there was one boy who was like you know her son's friend uh, came to uh, pick him up suddenly fell down fell down and then she went and helped him gave water and and dress the wounds so from far his father was coming he saw and then he was so thankful that sorupa thank you so much for helping my son and then they started interacting what do you do sorupa then she told like look i came from india i'm not getting any jobs so I, i'm still struggling and then then he asked like what is your background so she shared her background and then you know what he was actually looking for same bag and he gave a job so um, these are like very few examples but 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 what i'm trying to say is that you know networking can happen anywhere and and uh, how we can do professionally as well as personally i'll explain you few things here so identify relevant connections so you can like you know as a linkedin or or even you know networking starts from your grandfather it doesn't need to start from somewhere else it could be your grandfather your grandmother your parents everybody are connected to everybody like somehow the world is so connected and you need to identify who has that relevant connections so identify relevant connections so pinpoint professionals and industry leaders who can offer valuable insights and support for your career goals prioritize quality over quantity of connections so you know sometimes some people like go on linkedin and randomly connect with thousands of people and in the end they can't even communicate with a single person so the quantity doesn't really matter what matters is quality so i'm not talking about linkedin i'm talking about anything here what are the connections that can add value so you can take a pen and paper and list them out you know you can start with your friends let's say you're looking for a job in uh, maybe you know dr reddys or somewhere uh look at your friends if somebody is working there or always friends parents who are working there or always your seniors are working there or your teachers know the contacts so when you start mapping them out you know you will identify some real relevant connections so there is one theory called as six sigma or something everybody in the world are connected through only six people let's say you need to you want to connect to narendra modi you need to identify the six people who can take you to narendra modi. it could be you know it can start with one friend that friend knows some connection that connection knows some connection that connection knows another connection and then you know the sixth connection can take you to narendra 
So you need to identify those key contacts. That's what will help you. Anything like it could be job. Since we are talking about jobs here, we, we talk about jobs. But it could be, you know, getting funding for your startup or otherwise, you know, anything that what, whatever you name it, because we are all social animals and, and we have connections and we used to use that for our benefit. Okay. And then the second one is that attend events. So the COVID era has gone. Now people are not back to normal. So you can go to conferences, secret conferences, workshops, and meetups to engage with like-minded individuals. These in-person interactions can lead to fruitful collaborations and mentorship opportunities. So, I, and one of the other, other thing also that I'll tell you is that, you know, try to go to events where you pay some ticket money. So for example, we opened drug discovery workshop at Faba or something where we put little fee. Many of them, they see fee and they don't come. But you know, when you pay a fee, you act, you're actually entering into your quality connections. When you go to free events where there are thousands of people, you don't really get quality connections. So that is one tip. tip. But otherwise, you know, the main, main thing that I'm telling you is that don't stay in your comfort zone. Don't stay at your home or at your college. Go places. It could be another, other college or it could be other university or go to different place, different country. When you go and talk to people, you actually, you know, your, your thinking capacity changes. The more you network with people, the more you understand, like, you know, what are the skill sets that I carry? So th that's how you meet like-minded people. You know, as I said, they may become your mentors. When they become your mentors, they connect, it, they connect you with right people or others. They help you out in every point of your life. So this is so, so important. Okay. So attend a lot of events, especially paid events, because free events, most of the time you are a business fellow. So they are just, there are no free lunches. If there is any paid one, you are actually go to a quality one. So remember that. Okay. Leverage digital platforms. So, I mean, as we are all, as a said we are all humans we need to be in connections and connection can happen physical events or otherwise digital platforms utilize online platforms like linkedin twitter not instagram or facebook because i mean maybe instagram is good for younger generation like gen z but for people like like me or or Uday, we we use very less instagram we are more active on linkedin or or even on whatsapp okay Connection, connect with professionals, join relevant groups, and participate in participate in discussion. So, don't be you know a passive observer. Like these days, we consume knowledge so much, and we never really contribute anything. But but you know when you are just consuming, when do you contribute? When you contribute and you participate in discussions, doesn't matter whether you know something or not. But when you participate in discussions, that's where people get to know you. They notice you. And whenever there is an opportunity, they, they give it to you. Okay. Foster relationships through thoughtful comments and genuine engagement. So don't be forced to make a comment. Really be curious and genuine about people. And my favorite one is all the time is, you know, networking, people think that it's about getting whatever you want from connections. But I believe it's very, very wrong. Uh, what networking is that, you know, how can you help others? So when you network with people, always extend a hand, helping them. You know, are you looking for this help? Let me help you. Let's say you you a big mentor and you are expecting a job for him. There you are. You should not be interested in getting a job. You should be interested in how can you help? Maybe getting a glass of water in the conference, or otherwise booking a cab cab for him, or something. Otherwise getting whatever you want. Just simple simple examples that I'm giving. It's always give. When you start giving, automatically nature will give you back. There is a book. There is a book by a author called Adam Grant. He says that, you know, when you start giving, it's called give and take. So he says that there are three type of people: givers, takers, and neutralizers. You know, givers they are always interested in giving, and there are takers who are interested only in taking. They are not at all interested in giving. And there are people who are neutralizers. They give and they expect back. In his book, he has done a lot of data analysis. What he says is that people who are givers are the ones who actually get most of it in, in, in return, as well as they are very, very happy people. People who are takers, actually they get very less in life. And they're also one of the most unhappy and selfish people on the planet. And the neutral people, they are neither happy, neither, neither sad, 
but they are like you know some people are like that but i would recommend you that you know since you came to this webinar be a giver be a giver it could be you know sharing your knowledge to others training others even writing on linkedin writing a blog post whatever you have try to share it with others not to prove that you are great or something but really helping others there are many people who are under you there may be a lot of people who are above you like in terms of qualifications uh, or financial wellness and everything but there are many many people who are very very under you who are not even able to get a graduation or even go to the plus 2 or something so that's where if you offer value first automatically nature will give you everything whatever you okay so focus on how you can help others achieve their goals rather than solely on what you can gain provide insightful advice share relevant resources and make introductions to valuable valuable connections so it's always like when you start giving it comes back to you am i clear so far are there any doubt i think let's 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 stop for some time and, and take questions no no sir are you following me yep yes sir yeah so yes So do you agree that we have to be givers or takers? Givers. Givers. Why? Uh, because if we give to anyone, then universe like they give us back. So like. Okay. Okay. Any other explanations? But maybe give you... and take, maybe. Okay. Can you give an example that you have seen in your life that who is a giver, but actually is more happy? or otherwise you can also contradict me and say like sir what you say is bullshit i do not know how to i always have fight with my wife like when i start giving she says like you don't you don't even know how to live your life so uh, you, i mean you can contradict me as well i mean look at look at how dr uday has organized this webinar who will organize webinars for people like us you know everybody wants this marks and look for look for jobs like you know our college like your colleges you might have paid thousands or lakhs but they themselves are not organizing webinars like this why people like who they has to organize these things anyway, that's why you know we have very few people who are givers who are really interested in people so you are all lucky to find people like who they because they're genuinely interested to help you and you know nature always gives them back either it could be you know financially or mental health or any way somehow nature will protect them okay so any other thoughts every giver i have seen was really happy sir not financially yeah. stable but happy very good very good okay any other example giving is a just like a long term investment well said well said mehta any others you can also share any example any example you have seen that who is a giver and a happy happy person i'll tell you one one trick how to get a job i will not quote any books or any friends i'll quote my own example so my phd was from a place called heidelberg university germany while doing phd i realized that i'm not i don't want to be an academic and i would like to be a person who go into entrepreneurship or innovation and fortunately i i was into some innovation ecosystem and uh, uh, we we went to a hackathon in a hackathon have you heard of hackathon no sir no so hackathons are like you know one day or two day events where people come together and solve problems so we were solving a problem about you know how digital health can be applied to life sciences so we had one startup which was some some random idea and because we worked really hard and our pitch was selected our startup idea was selected for pitching in front of big people so i was not the one who was pitching i was just good at talking to people good make my team really stick to goals and everything and uh, because my our ceo let's say he was very good at pitching we won the prize since we won a prize and we were invited to pitch somewhere and my ceo was sick so he sent me i went there i was invited to another pitch 
I went there. I was invited to another pitch. I went there. Three, four times I had to pay my own tickets. I was living in Germany, but I was invited to Spain. I was invited to Paris. So I went there. I paid my tickets. And uh, actually, while going there, I used to help, you know, somehow their uh, organization in some or the other way. So slowly, I became their alumni brand ambassador. They asked me, will you be my brand ambassador? And I said, like, okay, I will be happy to do. I was zero expecting. I was all helping, like, same, like, however, we are doing webinars here. We were doing more physical events there. You know, you don't remember, because of that little goodwill, before finishing my job, I was offered a job at European Union without even applying. A black guy, a brown guy, working for European Union is not that easy. When you apply, there are thousands of candidates applying from European Union itself, Europe itself. Europe has its own countries. But I was offered a job without applying. Why? So I questioned myself. Like, you know, I finished my PhD on June 18th, 2018. June 19th, I had a phone call from my director and said, like, Jagadish, we created a job for you and you need to accept it. And I was actually thinking to, thinking to consider doing a postdoc in my own lab. So when I got the job, I was actually clueless. Why did they hire me? Then when I went and asked, they, you know, I demanded a salary and then they gave. When I asked, like, sir, uh, like his name is Kurt. Like, Kurt, why did you hire me? He told me, look, you are a very good networker and you are a helper and you brand is present. We would like to hire somebody who knows this good. Very simple. He was very logical. But, but take home message that I would like to say is that, you know, when you start being note, uh, present when you start giving, you'll get whatever you want. So because you are so relevant, even the job at Faba, like right now I'm chief operating officer. So this job, did I apply? No, like, but no, I've been working with Faba from 2020. I was an executive council board member, like Dr. Uday. I was helping them out to do events. And then Adana sir, my, our executive president asked me, will you take up the job? I took. So it's, it's always like, you know, you don't even need to apply, but when you are present there, start contributing things, you'll be selected. That that's that's very simple. So these are my own examples. It's not that I'm I'm quoting some books or something. So it could apply to anybody else. If you are aiming to something, you don't need to wait that this will come to you. You can start doing it. Let's say you want to do a research on cancer. Don't wait, somebody will give you a position on cancer. Start reading papers, write to them, ask them questions. Uh, talk to cancer patients, talk to cancer researchers, be real researcher where nobody has to give a job. Let, the, let that job be you and then jobs will fall. These are just byproducts when you start doing it. So these are, these are a couple of my stories. Like I believe whatever I'm telling you, like when you start doing it, when you start giving it, nature has its own way to take you wherever you want. Okay, are you all with me? Yes, sir. I want you all to be attentive and start networking here because there are a lot of people, let's say you're all in masters, let's say in 10 years or 20 years, you all will be really good, you know, high profile people. It could be vice presidents of the companies or uh, academic professors at certain universities. Imagine you met in the Zoom call and you became lifetime friends whom maybe you both collaborate and change the world. It could be, you know, change the global warming or there's no malaria because you both collaborated to make a vaccine. So. Start networking, showcase your strengths, talk more whenever I ask. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, oh. sir. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for being attentive. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So until now, we have finished what is CV and what is network. So CV is all about making your skills visible and showing that you are unique. Networking is all about giving and also going to physical events or, or uh, online events or online LinkedIn and, and talking to people and making yourself visible. Now we have a fantastic tool called LinkedIn. So how many of you all have LinkedIn? Can you put your LinkedIn profile in the chat? Let's say you all should get connected now. We have 33 people here, 33 connections we should have after this call. So pull out your LinkedIn profile. Let's start networking here itself. Okay, I see Suma, I see Sonali, Deepshika. Very good, 
shylessly accept people and also shylessly put requests there's nothing wrong you're all connected here with this event okay ajim the batman so batman are also here in this webinar okay pragnya very good okay so please keep keep getting your linkedin profile let me finish my powerpoint <laughs> so linkedin is really a fantastic why i like this tool so much is that you know this is a professional tool there is no like like bs like people really are professionals you can get connected to any experts and nowadays you know many big people are on linkedin it used to be twitter before but nowadays people are turned out to be on linkedin so you all should make a very good profile i'll show you what is a five star profile so how to optimize linkedin so have a compelling headline and somebody that highlight your unique value proposition and career aspirations so this if you are not sure how you to do it we have a recording about linkedin on our baba channel you go there everything is already recorded you just listen to that video so we have i have a friend called shashank shashank has given a beautiful so proactively connect with industry peers mentors and potential employers to expand your professional network so remember the word professional network don't be hasty to put like thousands of requests which are not relevant to you because in the end you start consuming nonsense which is not relevant to you so really connect with people who are relevant to you who can add value to yourself or otherwise you can also add value to them so don't be hasty in adding unnecessary Yes. Showcase skills. Let's update your skills section to showcase your relevant expertise, endorsement, and certifications. So I'll show you what what how a LinkedIn profile has to look like. So basically, what you have to do on LinkedIn is profile optimization. So so really, the your compelling headlines and everything. If somebody sees your profile, they immediately have to get that you are the expert, and you you connect with relevant people. and otherwise and uh, showcase your skills okay and then so now you know how to make a good cv you know how to network with people and you know how to make a good linkedin profile and what is this for it is for opportunity it is for jobs it is for projects it is for consulting things or anything so identify and pursue relevant opportunities what are the relevant opportunities and how to get them so one is job ads or job boards and alerts so you can subscribe to many of the newsletters like for example if you are applying for phd naturejobs.com is one of the really good one in upper abroad if it is india you can you can connect to biotechnica or or government websites so lots of things that comes or you know leverage job boards like linkedin linkedin has its own other 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 websites like naukri.com indeed.com glassdoor you can set up alerts for roles and match your qualification and interest these are all, these are all automated so you just have to enter into these things they will come to you target company targeted company research like don't randomly apply for thousands of jobs without even knowing what they do imagine if they select for interview and if you do not know who they are you are you know you will, you will not be selected they will like to hire somebody who knows the work who knows the company identify companies and organizations aligned with your career goals and proactively reach out about potential openings okay connect with professionals in your field interest to gain insights and record hidden job opportunities again networking so these are informational interviews you talk to people and and ask them like you know how the interviews will look like how the jobs will look like where are the jobs in it so job ads like targeted company search and otherwise informational interviews and as i said events attend industry events conferences meetups to expand your professional network and discover new possibilities it's always through people okay so preparing for interviews now let's say you have all the things that are needed for the job and now your job your cv got selected how do you prepare for the interviews okay so when you are when you have applied for let's say 
you know, again, maybe buy a phone or doctor it is. If you are going for the interview, really research the company and role. Like if they say, if they say like, where would you look, where would you see yourself in next five years? So if you don't even know the company, where would you see? If the company itself doesn't exist in a year or two, how would you see? So this is where like you need to really thorough research about the company, its mission, its specific role you are interviewing for. This shows, you know, you are really genuine guy and then they would like to hire you. Okay, this is, you really be serious about the interview. Pre prepare compelling talking points. You know, when you when people ask you, do you have any questions of the, after the interview? Most of the time we are blank. But if you go prepared, let's say how asking about their own job, asking about the company, a couple of, you know, first I didn't, we need to do your own analysis. Like you need to do a SWOT analysis called strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. If you do that, you will identify key strengths, your achievements, your relevant experience. So based on that, you can make small, small stories. When you make small, small stories in a compelling way, it's so easy for them to fall in love with you. Like they would like to really hire you. In, in the end, you know, it's about storytelling. So practice, practice, practice. So when you are going for the interview, you, you need to practice before the interview itself. You need to win before the interview. So rehearse your responses to common interview questions. There are maybe let's say 20, 30 questions which are repeated all the time. The first question is, tell me about yourself. When people ask you, tell me about yourself, you don't need to start with name. Let's say I am I'm Deep Shika. I'm studying MSc in so and so. And I have so and so this subject. These are all in your CV. You can start something different. You can you can tell like, look, I'm so and so. I have done this, and I would like. I'm aspiring that. I have this many strength. This is what you can you can tell. So this will really help you to be confident, and you can articulate your value effectively. Bring relevant materials. So when you go for the interview, take your CVs, your references, any work samples that people can see. If you have any prototype or something. Let's say you have any papers that you have published, you can take that. This will demonstrate that you are really a thorough professional. Okay. Okay, so how do you look for jobs? Let's let's look into it. So as I said, you know, LinkedIn, job boards, uh, or naukri.com, news alerts, or company websites, they will have lots of open positions and professional networks. So these company websites are so important because sometimes companies do not have a way to advertise jobs because they just don't know. And that's why when you look at your dream companies, within the company website, you will find them. And your professional networks, it's a network in there. So refine your application, customize your CV, resume, and cover letter for each role. So really, really tailor it. And prepare for interviews. As I said, you know, practice responses, research the company, and questions. And, you know, even... The, so what I'm telling is not easy process. So here I wrote like job search process can seem daunting, but by breaking it into manageable steps, you can effectively navigate your crucial phase of your career. Start by, by proactively searching for relevant opportunities, then refine your application materials to showcase your unique qualifications. Finally, prepare thoroughly for interviews to present yourself as the ideal candidate. Okay, let's go for the next. Okay, now I think I have explained you more about theoretical theoretical way, but but what exactly? Let's say you applied for hundred jobs and you are not getting even an interview. What should be your attitude? Mm, I will look at my CV and maybe I will try to uh, like put some more skills or like that according to the job position and i will craft it according to the position very good so you are really you want to change yourself change things and to make it work so these are more like you know your attitude attitude you are defining so many people when they get rejection one rejection they are done they don't like to apply they feel frustrated so in the end, these are you know soft skills where human where where our attitude. So the, now the next slides are more about attitude. So you know managing a positive mindset, mindset and resilience. So how does it work? So you you know be positive. 
like when you were if you, irrespective of the result even if you get rejected i know it's very tough but if you are positive things will come so approach challenges with a optimism and growth oriented attitude uh, reframe setbacks as opportunities for learning and self improvement as as somebody said it's it's a somebody if you are not being selected that means there is something to be changed so you you change it okay and then building resilience resilience is a very very important concept you know most of the time we are like you know like a mud ball when when mud ball is hit to the it, it like a, a wet mud ball is hit to the ground we are just stuck there but but resilience is a is, is a thing where you have to be like a rubber ball where if you hit to the ground you need to, you need to go up like 10 times higher so that what is resilience like you need to really develop some strategies to bounce back from failures and setbacks as as you embrace you know embrace a fail forward mentality and use obstacles as stepping stones to success i know these are all very easily said than done but but you know these things if you can develop there is no failure for you these are failures are just lessons and it will help you actually to move forward in a better way and practicing self care so most of the time you know when when something is is being not coming we always blame ourselves sometimes that will be actually you know, it, it can go into a detrimental way so we need to somehow prioritize ourselves you know a, a job should not be it define us in case if you are not getting a job maybe not now maybe sometime you'll get it so you know prioritize self care your well being to practices like meditation exercise work life balance eating good food replenish your mental and physical energy to sustain your career journey okay so you know in this in this age in this day and age like you know in this modern age more than the skills that you carry it's a soft skills that determine you quite a lot many of the jobs once you go a bit far very less about the hard skills it's more about the soft skills so couple of skills that are important these days you know what are that skills like i i picked up this chart from somewhere where it says like 10 soft skills in this age for career success the part, the first one is really really effective communication so if you are good communicator so communication is not just talking on the stage you know people confuse with stage stage speaking public speaking as communication skills no it's not that it's focusing completely let's say on the speaker when you are talking to somebody uh, listen listen about them so provide clear and specific feedback encourage open sharing ideas so these are communication things efficient time management when somebody gives you a task get it done in 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 in, in uh, no matter of time one task at a time prioritize on the important tasks like that analytical problem solving emotional awareness continuous learning innovative thinking building resilience adaptability cultural sensitivity cultural sensitivity especially when you go abroad you know you'll meet a lot of people when you when you can meet a couple of people from the local countries or coming from other uh, low and middle income countries if you are sensitive to gender and culture that can take you much much farther okay and also being a leader so these soft skills when you develop i mean failures doesn't even complete so embrace lifelong learning you know there is always learning that has to happen continuously seek out new skills courses and certifications to stay ahead of industry trends and expand your expertise especially these days you know artificial intelligence is playing a very big role so if some if many of the jobs can be replaced by artificial intelligence what is our role that's why we should constantly learn many things and we once we are a lifelong learner there is no job taking away from us attend conferences and workshops network with peers learn from industry leaders gain insights that can be applied to your career goal seek out mentorship very very important this if there is something that you i want you to take away from this session is look for mentors so dr uday saxena is a great mentor and i am also happy to see beda sir here that beda sir hi good evening so hello hello good evening jagdish good evening <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So happy yes. that you are here. I think people, all the kids who are here, I think there's so much to learn from you, sir. Thank you, Jagdish. Thank you. And yes. last slide, what you have shown, ten tips uh, actually for uh, self mentoring. Uh, awesome yeah. slides. Okay. To be very honest, I copied that slide without informing <laughs> you. I I take a screenshot of it. Okay. 
Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank no you. problem. I will be happy to send files as well. <laughs> yeah. Continue. So seek seek out mentorship. So you know, mentors mentorship is something one of the thing that people neglect, especially these days. I think you know, we are we do not have role models, like like when we were kids. Our father used to be a role model. Our neighbor used to be a role model. But because of Instagram and other social media, we lose confidence in our role models. Because because of Instagram and other social media, we lose confidence in our role models. Because there's so much noise. Like everybody has somebody role model somewhere in the foreign or outside in or in the sky. Everybody wants uh, Elon Musk as a role model. But you know Elon Musk will not help you to get a job. Your father may get help you to get a job. Your neighbor. these are your role models ask them for help ask them for mentorship they will be happy to help you out so be realistic have a good role models of course every role model will have negative side as well but look for what is necessary and seek mentorship from them there are many many happy mentors many mentors who would like to help you out only thing is you should ask you should be a mentee first when you are when you are when your mentee is ready mentor will a mentor will appear automatically okay so continuously upskill identify areas for improvement proactively take steps to enhance your skills and knowledge through online courses or training programs a lots of online programs i mean you can sit like like i was few days back in my village and i i was uh, not few days back a year back i was sitting in my village in, in near karnool in andhra pradesh a very remote village only 100 100 houses are there but i was training people in ireland about things so because with these digital things there are lots of skills that you can learn from harvard mit so there's so many things that you can okay, so i'll stop here and then i'll show an example of how linkedin profile my own I'll show a linkedin how i mean i'll show my own example like how linkedin profile should be like it has to be a five star profile there are stars so how how linkedin gives this stars is that i'll explain you so you know if you go to the linkedin there is a profile picture so make sure that your profile picture is a professional one don't take selfies or don't put passport size photographs because that gives a very very bad impression that you are not serious enough i mean if you have achieved something in life that's well and good but if you are looking for something make sure you get a professional picture and also add some background image where people can identify that you let's say you are a masters in something or looking for something for example i put this one because i'm really good in uh, helping entrepreneurs through community building and i have expertise in germany european union and india so that's why i just put this one and then you know this tagline is so important you are looking for a job so you could you could like make 100 taglines and put whatever is is apt so three things i told you profile picture which is professional a background image which is called cover image another one is your tagline so these things are important so at least have 300 connections so that you know shows that people you have enough connections and you are serious about it. if you are open to work you can you can open here open to work and what kind of roles you are uh, providing services you can put here so lots of things and other one which is also important is your about section about section take time identify your skills and write about section it's, it's this shows that what you are okay and you know another one another important thing is that making a linkedin profile only just as a passive way is not only is not necessary is not good you need to start producing content when you start producing content you can have a featured section let's say you you have achieved something you can put it in the featured section so these are all people who will read and then they will get to know who you are okay then you know once you start commenting or posting then they they will appear here so you can start writing experience in experience also as i said all the time put results so what you have done what you get what you are getting so like that you could you could start you can start writing many experiences whatever experiences you carry if you don't have it also you might have volunteer experience everything can put it here there is nothing right or wrong so like that you can you can add lot of things you go down your education is important you feel like any licenses uh, like for example i have some business licenses some animal handling license all this you can put if you have any volunteer experience you can put that if you have skills you know these are important sections why skills are important is when somebody is looking for a job they they will just use keywords and when we have skills it will pop up okay 
and if you have any recommendations you can ask people to recommend you you can also give you know when you start giving you get it back you can add your publication so i have added my publications here courses honors awards languages any organizations influences there's so many things that you can add so once you make all these things on linkedin then it is called as five star profile and it is it will be visible for others okay so that's how linkedin should be as i said you know if you are not finding what i'm if you are not able to follow what i'm telling go to youtube and go to pa sorry pawa academy here we have something called as pawa fridays in pawa fridays everything is listed so many things are there you just go there here 15 videos are there like you know how to cover letter statement of purpose cv how to build a career in science dr uday sang this is one of the fantastic webinar if you are confused about industry and academia that you should watch every licensed individual should watch this one because this will gives a lot of clarity if you go to industry what will be your profile if you go to academia what will be your profile like that you have many other things so how to level up your career if you are interested in entrepreneurship it is there industry academic interactions how to make linkedin lots of things are there that we have invited couple of experts from abroad as well they taught us how to make our, our uh, how to make our profile so everything is there you just go there and listen to that you'll you'll get to know okay i think i'll stop here with it so that you know we can have more time for interactions yeah great uh, i mean that <laughs> i wish you didn't have to stop because it was just uh, <laughs> amazing but i think yeah why don't we uh, go ahead um, take some questions please uh, and just introduce yourself and then directly ask your question okay and when you're asking a question please show your video so we uh, i am i completed my bachelor's in biotechnology and right now i am studying masters in biological resources here in germany so i am in my second semester right now okay and 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 your doubt is that if you ai can take your job no so uh, there are also hot skills like uh, bioinformatics and like uh, the python that also play a important role in getting job so what about it like <laughs> so uh, positioning and uh, and all that uh, i think ai is here to stay i mean for part of our lives um so you have to be educated on what is ai and how it can help you but it's not going to supplement for your knowledge you know if you remember apollo 11 apollo they all went to the moon without any ai the power computing power they had was what you have in our smartphones these days so human ingenuity and knowledge and all of that is never going to be replaced by ai ai is just an enabling tool so I wouldn't really worry about it taking your job, but just be stay updated on what AI is and how people are using it. That's all. So yeah. Thank you, sir. Yep, you're welcome. You. We got time for a couple of more questions. Uh, so uh, I know Jagdish such did such a. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people <laughs> wanting to <laughs> ask questions, but. Uh, you know you can also connect with him he is an uh, absolutely a uh, wonderful mentor i know that for a fact so you can connect with him offline too but yeah a couple of more questions please yeah 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 i have, yeah. Yeah, Bini, uh, I have one question sir what yes. type of the content should we share on linkedin to uh, enhance our career prospects very very good question yeah so um i mean what i would recommend is that when you have first identify your own skill set let's say you are masters in food technology or something and you are aiming for phd in food technology i think the the idea would be your research topic you want to change you want to study so and so so that is like your identify your area of interest now focus on that area of interest let's say you read a paper and go there so and so author has done this i think this is not the right something like that you know where you share 
you you were you were uh, articles or or posts where it defines you as a person let's say if somebody is hiring in that area in technology people will like to see that you are already an expert when you are an expert when you at least share things people can see that you are you know things then that you know it determines that you are qualified so one is a targeted up another one you know where people like me we don't <laughs> i don't need a, i know you need a job i focus more on educating people if i think i write so recently i wrote one thing which which it's really uh, i felt like gen z population like most of you are here are gen z like you are talking about many of you you may not be really interested in whatever we are telling that you are you may thinking that i don't care that everything will come to us my father is rich my mother is rich so when people like us who have struggled so much from zero to build what we are we expect the same things in you but we ourselves has to be learn, like we have to learn and learn and relearn here that we have to handle you with care you know we have to understand your generation where you don't want to get a 9 to 5 job you want to change the world where you want to cure the cancer where you want to prevent the global warming so i wrote this because i felt that gen z people when talk to us when 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 we work when they work with us we get so frustrated so annoyed <laughs> so there we have to learn not you so i think such kind of things where i feel i right so for you when you have something a target in mind really focus on that and focus on the people who are writing the same go comment them share those posts so mainly on your aim if you don't have aim mainly uh, or if you want to be thought leader focus on one topic excellent thank yeah. you sir i have one small question yeah please go yes. ahead uh, sir like uh, what should be avoided in our cv like the small mistake which mistake should be avoided in our cv so that yeah it uh, the cv will be presented with the it may we may be selected by that yeah a oh, very very good question so yeah. couple of things that are not necessary are you know and i'm not talking about completely selection but few general things you don't need to add your marital status you don't need to add your date of birth you don't need to add irrelevant experiences so focus on the job and, and also if you have experience put experience first then education okay. next so uh, really look for the job and what they are looking for and sometimes you need to add visa status if you are applying for abroad that is very very yes. must it's really a must yes. and and also the statement of purpose people write quite a lot like you know objective that's bullshit yeah. you don't need to write that objective you because what i see is that many of the pressures they don't even know how to write a sentence and they just they go and write this objective grammatically wrong spelling mistakes wrong and i asked them why did you write then they say like you know that's how it's a, it's a performer like like you know based by looking at it i don't even want to read other other parts of your cv so write whatever can add value and another one is that don't lie on your cv i mean my own story so in my msc animal biotechnology we were shown a mass spectrometer and i thought and we were we did a project for a month on mass spectrometer but i never touched the machine because our our in charge person was touching the machine and i convinced my interview that i know mass spec and when i went to germany in 2012 for my phd they gave me mass spec to work no training and i am a biologist not a biophysicist i do not know what is a trap column i do not know what are <laughs> so after 8 months at one point i openly told my boss look i it made me so anxious i was not i was never so i had to quit and join another lab so the take home message that i want to tell is that put something you are really really confident in any techniques on your cv if you have seen something if you have learned theoretically don't put that on your cv because you will be bombarded with that and then you'll struggle <laughs> yeah. yeah true story <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. 
Uh, before uh, we have a formal uh, thank you for you, uh, Jagdish, but before that, I want to just take 30 seconds and tell you about IFER, which is a foundation we, my family has created in my parents' name, uh, Indira and Ishwar. Uh, they are my parents' uh, foundation for translational lead, translational research, uh, leadership, and entrepreneurship. I think what you heard today is how to build yourself to be a leader. So an uh, excellent um, seminar on that. Uh, we train, uh, we take fresh masters, women students. My mother couldn't finish her PhD because me and my brother, we are twins, were born at that time. It was always her desire to promote women in science. So that's why um, really we the family has started. Uh, we select three uh, master students, women, and we pay them uh, stipends and we train them for six months in hands-on research. Uh, the first batch uh, has successfully graduated. I see that they're all attending. Uh, they actually got a publication and their work recently won. It was presented by our manager, Sharanya, but it won an award too. So... Um, that's so we are not a cookie cutter type of uh, um, foundation. We are really, I want to only take two or three people and train them to be leaders and be fearless one day. So, said for that, Leia, it's not a doubt. Sir. So, nowadays, so many private agencies are coming in between, not a person directly applying to the company. In between the agencies, are there like what do you think, sir, how, uh, for getting job, the agencies, how they. I, I do not have experience here, any, but but uh, if they are really good agencies, there is nothing wrong in it. But but if they are, you know, some predatory agencies, you should be careful about it. And and moreover, I mean, it, as as I told you on, on one of the YouTube videos, just look for networking. My YouTube video, you look at the job, how people hire. So. 85 to 90 percent of the people get hired through networking so if you are applying for open positions or agencies you are actually doing wrong because you are applying for only 15 percent of the positions through them the remaining 85 percent are filled through networking you might have encountered already when you apply for jobs you will say that oh they hired internal person or the, you know the friend of their their uh, friend's son got hired friend's daughter got hired. that is called networking Believe me, that is networking. And people take because they can trust others. They cannot trust thousands of other people. That's where you reach out to these consultancies. But that is that may work or may not work. Many people, they get looted because of it. But uh, utilize the power of networking. I mean, this platform itself is, is a really powerful network. Connect to the people. You yourself can help you out. Help out each other. Yeah. I, it's not a straightforward answer, Sharon, yeah? So I do not have experience, but but the thing is, there are good agencies, there are really good consulting firms, but they are bad too. So it really depends on what stage you are, where you are. So you cannot generalize that. Thank you. So, Saranya, in my experience, the ones who ask for money up front are not very good. Usually the model is they should get your job and then collect one month's salary or something. But if the agency says pay us twenty five thousand first and help you. Those are yes. unlikely to be good ones. Yeah. Hey, before we leave, I I would like to advertise one thing about Faba. So Faba, I, I I didn't put anything so that because I'll take other fifteen minutes. So Faba is is a non profit organization like uh, IFER. Uh, but the the motto is to connect the industry and academia mainly to help you guys. So I have put one link in, in the in the in the chat. It's called Power Innovation Summit. So from August 3rd to 18th, we have three events coming up. So one is drug discovery and development workshop, where I told you, you know, it's there is a fee for students, 2,500 rupees. So if you can afford that, pay and get into that because you will be exposed to around 40 mentors from all over the world who are really drug discovery experts. They are the company executives or academia experts who are doing it. Not like typical academia curriculum. This is like uh, really done through the experts who are doing it. Another one is well tank, where I don't think you guys are 
uh, you guys have that background. And the last one is Faba Innovation Summit, where you get to know the who's and who's of the industry and academia. That will happen at University of Hyderabad in India. So make sure you register to that and get our uh, mentorship or, or help. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So Sir, thank one you. more yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there are some jobs that are not advertised on any social media or any newspapers. So how one can know about that? That is the question. Networking. What is networking? Ask your parents, ask your friends, ask your gym, anywhere, wherever you go. That's how many of the jobs are. When you know that these things are not advertised, then where are they going? Talk to them. It's not so okay. difficult. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, yep. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. One last question, please. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I'm Preeti Shankar. Uh, I was previously working. Hello, sir. I was previously working at uh, IEFR as an intern, and I just want to thank uh, Fava and IEFR that I got this internship through uh, Fava's LinkedIn post. Uh, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Faba yeah. is helping IFR too <laughs> because usually it's other way around. The so right. is our background. Our back like he is the one who helps us. <laughs> and and yes, she sir. did really good at her internship. So she was really good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah, glad that right. Faba can help us. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Beniha, do you want to formally thank uh, Dr. Jagdish? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. It's my honor to extend our heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Jagadish Kadla for his enlightening talk. We are incredibly grateful for the time you took to share your expertise and the detailed guidance on how to effectively craft our CVs and optimize our LinkedIn profiles. Your advice would greatly help us stand out in the competitive job market and propel our professional growth. And I want to express our sincere gratitude to our CEO and mentor, Dr. Uday Seksena. It is through his constant support and leadership that we are able to come together for this inspiring event. I would also like to take a moment to thank you all the participants and attendees. It is your dedication to learning and professional development yeah. that truly make this section meaningful. Thank you one and all. Yeah, well said, Beniha. So, uh, Jagdish, uh, we end this, but obviously you're going to come back for a few more of these in due time. So, <laughs> thank you so much for yeah, thank you so yeah. much for your thank time. You. Thank